Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Joshino, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new and updated Paladins Open Beta 67 public test server. So, this is the new client that is coming forward, and gone is the difference between arcade mode and classic. Now there is only Siege, well, well you actually click on only Siege, so it's only one game mode. There's Deathmatch currently, which is a squashing together of Onslaught and Deathmatch, which I, I kind of hope they're fixing and is not intentional, because... Uh, yes. They're saying deathmatch game modes based around eliminating enemy players. hi -res, please! And then you've got competitive, so it's very clean on your eyes what's going on here. There's very simple layout of which game modes you're going to go to, you know what you're going to get. Uh, also, if you want to create a custom game, it's, it's got its own little icon now. It's also quite large on the screen, which is nice, just these cogs. Make it with whichever, and you just create it like you used to be able to do so. Training the same, it's just one little icon, and then you've got all of the training modes. And as per OB66, I think it came in, the artwork on it is pretty awesome as well. I think it's actually one of Androxus cards, and this is maybe Leon's, or maybe one of Ash's cards. And uh, you can also change your region on the front as well, you don't have to do it every time you go into Siege or whatever. So I think this is a massive improvement to the UI. The big thing though, is the grind, and, and the loadouts, and everything going on here. So we're just going to quickly Maldamba. take a look. So, for example, Maldamba, and create a new loadout for them. So, th one thing to notice straight away is, if you have the champion, all of the c cards are unlocked for them. And they are all level 1 here, but once we put something in, so I want to actually make something a little bit serious, so cooldown of Slither is something that's quite important. I have all of the levels. So you've got the common, uncommon, you've got the rare, epic, and legendary, rarities, but they're only linked to the level of the card, and you have 15 points here, which you must spend across the whole of your loadout. This one's quite a big one. If you miss your Mending Spirits, you get uh, a cooldown, so you can more, more often heal. Same here. Um, some big things here. So the damage reduction could be good. Gourd cooldown, let's just put a bit in there. We want to toss the snakes a bit more often. We can drop in snake pits, level 1. And, for example, perhaps even re re revealing enemies a little bit with the cord. Why not? We'll just chuck that in there. So now we just have to balance out a loadout. They also give you a default loadout, but they're all set to level 3, which actually makes a lot of sense because, well, there's 15 points. The mathematics actually works a lot more and better for 5 cards here. Before it was 4 and 12 points, now it is 15. So cards and bound is gone, and we've got this new system. Uh, and, well, you can save it if you want to come out of it. The, other, the only thing that you have to unlock in the game now is the talent cards. Now, if you have the champions on account, you will get all of these for free, but currently on the overview, you have mastery rewards, and each of the legendary cards, on, they're now called talents, are, un, are locked on, on this grind for the champion. They've also drastically reduced the amount of grind for these levels, and one thing they've added is you can level up the champion, the champion by spending gold. Currently there aren't any rewards past the level 30, so getting past level 30 doesn't really have much point, but on the PTS, the public test server, you have unlimited currency. They just give it to you every time you log in, so I can just go level 26. It's quite tedious because you have to level up, level up, but if you switch off, it comes back again. So now we are level 26, so it boomed up there. So now we are level 26. We've gone up 10 levels. Now a lot of people are saying, Wait, wait, hold on. We, do, we don't want this, because currently, a lot of people tell a person's skill by the level, the mastery level of the champion they're playing. Now, for me, I don't think it was ever a very good metric. Yes, there's a correlation between a person's account level, how long they've played with the game, and the champion level currently, and often what their skill will be like. But the, re the reality should be that the main indicator should be your rank. The main thing here is I wish that they would make it so that not only on your profile do you see the division, but that you could see the division when you joined a game, because it's quite a, a difference between, say, Diamond 1 and Diamond 5, especially in Platinum, because the Platinum's a big uh, ranking bracket, so between 5 and, and 1 is pretty huge. And the, I mean, the same across the whole spectrum, and it just, for me, that would give a little bit more of an incentive to play the Siege, the competitive mode, and also to show off a, a more realistic level of what somebody's rank is. Maybe before the champion levels were a pseudo symbol of how good somebody was before. The other thing you can see here is that the quests have changed quite dramatically. There is still a harder quest, 
which is to get the actual crystals and to get the VOP points. So that's still te play 10 games. So that's quite a grindy one. But the two that you actually get the in-game currency are much lower. For example, just playing two games as a flank and getting 150,000 damage shouldn't be too difficult across two games because that's only 75,000 damage each game. If you took a damage dealer in a match, say you take a Drogos, then you should be getting around that even if you lose the match. So that's a hell of a lot better and a hell of a lot quicker. And especially getting this champion quest, like 40 daily quests should go a lot faster for you. And for people that are casually playing the game, that are perhaps playing between work and school, and they have other commitments, and maybe, maybe even play other games, and are juggling games together, it should be much easier to get out the premium stuff as well. Fair. I think the main idea behind the gold buying of the levels of the mastery is that if you're a newer player and you're playing one champion, whilst you play your maybe you, your champion you feel most secure on, you can be leveling up another champion at the same time. I do agree to some extent that it's kind of maybe not unnecessary, and it's just maybe giving a reason for the gold to exist. Uh, but what they've said is that there's a lot more stuff that you can use gold for, and maybe, you, maybe stuff that'll be on the higher mastery levels, or maybe there'll be quests around mastery levels. Uh, but they said basically there'll be more rewards for gold in the next patch, which we only can speculate on now and look forward to. So for the most part, or maybe all of the talent cards currently in OB67, these are the level 4s that were in OB66. Now, I haven't checked all of them, but for example, barracks are exactly the same as level 4s. However, it is more open now for high res with only level 1s of these talent cards, so you'd have to unlock 10 levels with only a single one for them to make them a bit more balanced. Seems, it seems that way with all the champions at least. Uh, I checked Makara as well. Um, I haven't gone through them all, but this is another improvement as well that all the talents are in one spot with the abilities. I think it's just awesome that they brought these together so you can just check out the champions in a much more simple way. And just for newer players, it's going to be much easier, I think, too. On the cards themselves, they seem to be pretty much the level 10 to level 1 variety with just 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 currently, which I we'll just have to see how the balance works. But that's an interesting point to point out here, that the actual normal loadout cards are perhaps a little more powerful than they used to be, and the talents on the other hand are slightly less powerful. Now a lot of people have argued that legendary cards themselves or talents maybe made the game worse at some point, but it's interesting to see them toned down a bit here whilst everything is toned up. But I think that perhaps over the next few patches we'll see more tight balancing of the new system. But playing the game itself at the moment just feels like a breath of fresh air. And you can do a lot more with champions than you could if you were playing the classic mode previously. Like one of the biggest examples is with Androxus. If you're taking the legendary card uh, here, where are you at? Power of the Abyss. 100% reset on the nether step. This is huge when you combo it with the heal of the nether step. So we could have two of those, two big, big cards there. You have some hits re reducing the cooldown of the reversal, maybe having the increase of the nether step dash because it was nerfed recently. Then you also have the generating ammo when you nether step. So for example, this could be very similar to what the old Androxus builds were that made him perhaps a bit more viable in his past. Now we'll just have to see how it'll work out with the new Androxus. I know that he does have a bit of a bad animation at the moment, but it's awesome that some of these builds have come back in the classic mode as well, uh, in, in just the general Siege and Competitive, because this is very fun and just, just the customization is back again. I mean, technically, there's a lot more combination now than there were in the 12 point system that we even had before, because obviously with the extra three points, you have uh, a multitude more variations. Currently, the import function doesn't seem to be working on the loadouts, but I hope that that comes back because that was very handy before. And in some ways, I kind of hope they didn't they streamlined streamlined it a bit. Maybe even looking at some of the pro players' loadout cards, or even using some of the API stuff that's gone on in third-party sites, so looking at win rates of certain loadouts and giving options to players to try out some sort of builds. But you can always go third-party to the better meta and to Paladin's Guru and things like that to check those out if you are really interested. I do actually think for the most part they have picked out the easier to use and mostly pop more popular to use legendary cards or talents at the start. So you start off with the, here with Genos you start off with Celestial Touch which is the 
uh, healing maximum health. Then you want to binary star, which is a, a damage option. Then to the power cosmium, which I think is very situational and a bit meh. And finally, you get the luminary, which adds just that extra bonus damage buff. Now, you could argue that perhaps this one is easy to use too, and one of the more picked up options when you've got generous maybe sitting in the back or two healers going on and you can give that damage. But the same with Maeve. So to begin with, you have the Artful Dodger, which is the heal and cleansing of crowd control effects, which I think is the easiest to use too. And then it goes on to things that are a little bit more of a situational pickup. Anyway, that was a bit of an odd one. This is a bit of an, a different patch, but I think that they've gone maybe five steps forwards, even from where they were when we had the Essence system. The grind is so much more linear and easier. Obviously there's some quirkiness with the purchasing of levels for the champions to rank them up quicker, um, but that can be ironed out and maybe they'll look at that again. But I think just generally everything going on here, streamlining of the UI, everything's much more simple, more obvious what you're doing. The quests have been made much more easy. And if you're a new player or a casual player, then, well, this is definitely the patch for you. Again, if you haven't already made a Paladins account and you're watching this just so you're curious about Paladins, well, start up an account, get in the game, because all of the champions you have, you'll have all of the talent cards unlocked, so you don't have to do any growth. Any at all. But I mean for a new player coming into things, most of the champions have a loadout card that will be easy to learn a champion on to begin with anyway. Anyway, this has been a bit of a weird video too, but what does everybody else think about this patch and everything going on here? Are you looking forward to trying this out on Wednesday? So in three days it will be out on the live version and we will have this ourselves. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more of my content, and if you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification icon, the little bell icon, so that you definitely get the notifications for the video. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Joshino.